To start, we've sectioned the hair into a hot cross bun so that we can maximize the length that we take off in bulk. We'll then use some foam tonic or hair tonic of your choice and some water to add some hydration and condition to the hair, making it easier for us to manipulate. For a box section, we'll create an L-shaped section from the parietal ridge and back to the crown. We'll then find the section on the other side and run parallel to our initial line. To keep this section nice and square, we are rigid when creating new lines, making sure not to round the corners. For the back, we're creating a chevron section. This is to separate the crown from the rest of the haircut, as this will be our connecting panel from the sides to the top. The crown is often sectioned separately to the back of the head, as the crown is a dominant growth pattern and may require extra care and attention. We'll start this haircut with graduation, starting from our shortest point, the temple, and working towards the back of the ear. The cutting guide is set on panel one, and it will be followed back with no over direction. Diagonal back sections are chosen to debulk the sides while working our way towards the back of the head. As we reach the back of the ear, we'll slightly alter our cutting line. Now that we've reached the back of the ear, we're going to bring each panel into our last. This is called over direction. This method is used when we're building weight in a certain area. For example, panel 2 into 1, 3 into 2, and 4 into 3, and so on. In this case, we're building weight around the corners and the back of the head to leave more length in the mullet and create a squarer silhouette. Moving on to the back of the head, we're using zero degrees elevation and using the back of our hand to maximize tension to create a solid cutting line. Choose the desired length and using a feather razor or scissor, debulk. This will act as your cutting guide and shortest point when introducing your vertical cutting line or layer. Take a profile section in the center of the back of the head and cut in your guide. Move on and take another section no wider than the width of your comb and match your cutting guide. From here on out, work either left or right of the head and over direct each panel into the last. That means section three into two, four into three, and so on. Release the chevron section and follow the cutting guide into the crown. At this point, you can choose to alter your cutting line by introducing a triangular cutting line. But for this tutorial, we'll be following through with our square shape. For the outer shape, pull the hair down to its natural line on the skin and cut in the outer line. Any excess hair at the temple can be cleaned up with scissor over comb. By using zero degrees elevation, we're maximizing tension and creating a solid outer shape ready to be refined by our trimmers. For a more natural look, you might leave the scissor line. And for a further textured approach, cut the line with a feather razor. Moving on to the top, we're taking a profile section no wider than the width of your comb. To find the center of the head, you may use facial features such as the bridge of the nose or the inner edge of the eyebrows. There's a few different approaches to creating or using a guide here. For example, you could start at the crown to bring the shape in from the back of the head. Alternatively, you could use a previously cut fringe line, but for this tutorial, we're starting at the top of the head, the apex, and creating our guide. Bring the hair up from the root with good tension and follow our vertical shape using a square cutting line. Moving left or right, we're then over directing each panel into the last to slightly increase weight horizontally on the corners of our shape. For the external shape, create a center line from the bridge of the nose and back to the crown. Part the hair either side, thus creating two zones. Expand the shape out towards the side of the head at 90 degrees elevation so that we're not creating further weight. Find your cutting guide by placing your comb underneath and remove the excess. Repeat this process for the other side and then tidy up the fringe. Start by rough drying, removing the majority of the dampness of the hair. You can then further manipulate the hair with a vent brush to style the hair into the desired shape before moving on to your clipper work. I've chosen to taper the sides of this mullet, but you may want to leave the sides if you're going for a more natural approach. This will be a simple tutorial on the tapers as it's a subtle addition to the haircut. I will however be uploading an in-depth tutorial on skin fade tapers. If that sounds like a bit of you and you're interested, please leave a comment or give a thumbs up to this video. To start the taper, we're using our trimmer line into an open lever on our clipper. Further close the taper lever slightly until the zero line disappears. Using a one and a half guard with an open lever, debulk. Further close the lever and work just underneath the previous line. Place on your one guard and remove the lines from underneath the previous guides. To blend the taper into the rest of the hair, use clipper or scissor over comb and refine the details. Take the trimmers and clean up the edges and refine any parts of the outline that you feel need attention. This is coming towards the end of the haircut, so use this time to personalize and refine any further details. To break up movement in the hair, we're using a point cutting technique. Using a 5.5 inch scissor, such as the Mataki Kinju, point cut over comb or pick the hair up and cut vertically into your fingers, making sure to cut on the way out, not on the way in. You want to keep those little money makers of yours safe. 
I've chosen to style Jax's hair with some dry clay from Uppercut Deluxe, and I'm using this on top of the foam tonic, which is the pre-styling product we already used at the start of this tutorial. These two are a deadly combo for a good natural hold that is reworkable throughout the day. Let me know if you're interested in product tips and tricks to help you understand different hair types and what works best for every scenario. So that brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. I'm CMC Barber and you've just watched the Mullet tutorial. Make sure to check back every week for new tutorials and reviews and hit that subscribe button to get notified when fresh content arrives.